grab your big book, your pen, your highlighter, and notepad and get ready to hear and apply some of the solution from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous through the experience, strength, and hope of Nikki M. To have a question addressed in a future episode of Noodle It Out with Nikki, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com and Nikki is spelled with two Ks. To get a more interactive experience with Nikki as she noodles out life and recovery questions using the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you can get a link to her weekly Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting held live on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The information to that meeting is in the show notes of this podcast. God morning, God afternoon, and God evening to all. My name is Justin B. I am a son of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a qualifying addict of multiple fellowships living in the miracle of recovery. I'm a perfect, I'm a perfectly imperfect <laughs> creature who is walking this path of recovery. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm here with the intelligent agent, spearhead of God's ever-advancing creation, and my co-host, Nikki M. Nikki, talk to us just a little bit about what's going on in your life. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Nikki M. And it's a, it's a great day. It's Monday morning. And that's when you and I usually meet to record the podcast after the live Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting where we all meet. We had, we had over 150 people this morning. And even with the construction next door that's eating my soul and the banging, you know, I was able to keep a positive attitude. And that's really what this is about. I was, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to switch and I'm, grr. and it was, no, it was, I was peaceful. So I'm really in a peaceful mood this morning. And and thank you, everybody who who donates and participates in the seventh and listens and shares this podcast because you know we're we're helping even one person just by sharing our experience, strength, and hope. I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, thank you, Nikki. And you know, thanks for sharing about you know the banging and how you're able to find peace in that. I was I was talking with a sponsee this morning and we were reading pages 87, 88 as we were going through it. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the next right thing. And then on page 88, we are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, and foolish decisions. And I think that that's just a really cool fruit of recovery when I'm living and, you know, things are eating my soul and I can still have that calmness. I'm much less in danger of the excitement that comes. And that's not the woohoo excitement. That's the the emotional troubling. No, thank you for, for sharing that. All right. Um, as you mentioned, Nikki, um, we are so grateful to those who have donated and supported the RICO 12 cause. Uh, we just renewed our zoom license and that, that wasn't cheap, but, uh, grateful to have all these, uh, donations that come in. If you out there in the listening audience feel a nudging to donate, please consider doing so. You can go to rico12.com forward slash support. The links are in the show notes. You can donate there. Um, it really does help us in continuing our uh, our mission here with the RICO 12 projects. And go check out all those other things. You can find that at rico12.com. And to participate in any future Noodle It Out with Nikki, if you have questions, please consider sending them to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com. That's Nikki with two Ks. And uh, we'll get to those questions as they come along. Now, what we do in this project with Noodle It Out with Nikki is we take a, a question that may come up in emails, it may come up in our in our daily lives, it may come up in the Noodle meeting, it may come up in the Noodle chat on WhatsApp, um, but uh, and we just bring it to to Nikki to to speak big book to that, to bring answers out of the big book to these questions. Today, I've got a question here that I'm going to uh, pose to Nikki, and we'll get into what the big book says. Here's that question. I find myself being fearful of the scary what ifs that are often part of life. I want and hope that things work out perfectly, at least how I want them to. How can I find peace in accepting the unknown end result? Nikki, what does the book say? Wow, it says a lot. I mean, this we could probably have a five day episode on this question, but we'll start here. You know, how do you find peace in the unknown, you know, and and the what ifs? Well, Number one, we are in a 12-step group. And I don't care like what, what your addiction or affliction is. We happen to use the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous here. That's what we use here. So I believe my book. That's number one. I have to come in here and believe what my book says. Because my book says 
there are going to be page 15, certain trials and low spots ahead. My book says that there will be low spots. My book also says that um, if trouble comes, you know, that's what the book says on page 133. It says, if trouble comes, that means trouble might come. My book says, I will make mistakes. That's on page 117. So there's all these things that are happening. So how do I find peace? So number one, I have to believe this book. Now, number two, I need, we come in here and, and what are we trying to do? We're trying to stop our addiction and we may be addicted to our belief system. We're addicted to our fears. We're addicted to our worry. We may not even be addicted to any drug. You may be sober. You may be here years and years and years. And you may say like, well, I'm sober, Nikki, and I don't have any, you have an addiction to something. Otherwise you'd be at perfect peace and ease alone. See, this is what, and, and I love our round table. Yes, we have the Noodle with Nikki podcast, but we also have our round table, Justin, that we do with David G. And last week's episode, we talked about on page 32, where it says, I want to get there so I don't mess this up, but I, it's really, I just, you know, when something comes up and then you start talking about it, you start teaching it, and then that's how you start learning the book more and more. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says on page 132, then she, I'm going to put a she there instead of he, then she fell victim to a belief. Okay. We come in here so we don't fall victim to a belief. See, we come in here, and this is what David G, I think, is open mind, and I'll speak for you too, Justin. Our 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 minds open to this is really about changing our concepts, our beliefs, our 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 attitudes, our ideas. So that the what ifs don't matter anymore. See, that doesn't matter. What if I don't believe that anymore? Everything's okay. I don't see I, that's the whole point here is that that doesn't come into my life anymore. What if, what if what? What if what? Because something's going to happen is what my book says. So I'm already prepared for it. I have a plan in place. And what is my plan? Well, it's to follow the directions. See, <clears throat> I quit playing God. So what's going to happen is I take a sincere position every day. That's page 63. That's how I find peace is I take a sincere position, not only to quit playing God, to believe what the book says, to heed the warnings, to follow the suggestions, to do all these things and never perfectly. See, it's not, this is not easy. So every day I'm like, okay, how many lies do I still still believe? Because if I believe, okay, so you come in here and you get sober. I know a lot of people who come in here and whatever, they get so, sober on whatever addiction is eating their soul at their time. But they're still doing things that don't line up to the beliefs of a spiritual program. And that's those are the things like you're <laughs> you're not, say, cheating on your wife anymore. You're not watching porn or you're not eating the white flour. You're not drinking anymore. But you're lying on your taxes. Like it just, none of it makes sense. Like we don't, here it is. We can't do what other people do. It's like, I was listening to a, a friend of mine who's a Christian and she's like, Christians don't get to do what other people do. Even though other Christians are doing that. They're in, say you're at church and other Christians are engaging in gossip. You don't get to engage in gossip, even though they're engaging in gossip. See, we're in the 12 step rooms. And even though my friends are sober, or even if I'm doing other things that even my sober friends can't do, because I don't have those addictions and afflictions. So this is why it's very laser designed. So how do I get, find peace at, in, in, in an uncomfortable situation is I believe what my book says. Also, it tells me I'm a spearhead page 49. It tells me I'm an intelligent agent spearhead. It tells me that uh, the promises that God will do, will do for me. It doesn't say might, doesn't say could. It's like, do I choose to think about what my book says? Or am I choosing to believe, what if? Because you know, everybody, if you're listening and you know me, you know I'm a scroller. <clears throat> I'm a doom scroller. Not so much a doom scroller, 
I'm more trying to get armed with the facts, justifying my scrolling, Justin, is what I like to do, okay? But the truth is I'm not looking for good news. I'm looking for like, what is the future going to, what are they going to do to my food? What are they going to do to my rights? Because I've just, if you're listening, we're in 2024, we've come out of COVID where things are a little different. The world that we knew before COVID is not what it is now. And so I'm preparing for the what ifs. Well, the what if, Nikki, is that you live for God and that you have nothing to worry about. I mean, that's radical. That's radical reprogramming. So if I'm in this program, I'm getting radically reprogrammed. Does that make sense, Justin? It does. It does. And Nikki, you know, I've heard you say before, talk about fantasy, you know, so often is, well, in my, in my life, fantasy is often, oh, I'm envisioning myself on a yacht with beautiful women surrounding me and feeding grapes and, you know, all, you know, whatever it may be. And to me, that's what fantasy is. But there's another side of fantasy that I am every bit as much powerful, powerless over. Can you talk to us about fantasy and and from different perspectives and, and angles? Absolutely. Because everyone's in here like, Oh, Nikki, don't, if you were in an A, say this is an AA meeting. And they're like, well, don't talk about fantasy, Nikki. That's for the fantasy addicts and fantasy addiction, sex and love addiction. They need to go to their rooms. No, it's all in the big book. And exactly what Justin said, it's not about, uh, you know, beautiful people. I, I'm a twilight mom. I have a mother of a 32 year old twilight came out. And I'm like, I need a vampire who's going to take care of me forever. Like I got sick in that disease, but it's not just about that. It's a fantasy like, you know, I'm going to say our new grandbaby because I don't have one. So let me borrow yours, Justin. How about your it? How new- about it? <laughs> Thank you. So let me call him our little new grandbaby that you and your beautiful wife have. And I'll be fake grandma over here. And it's like, what's going to happen to our little baby? You know, like what's literally like the world's not a great, but so we, you and I drift into a sick, morbid reflection of the world. And, and let's go here. What does the book say about it? It says page 559. And this book is a magic book. I know they have a fifth edition coming out, but this is the fourth edition. And in the fourth edition, the very last paragraph on the stories at 559 and the stories do matter. And you have, that's why you have to stay here because I don't know all 559 pages and what they say on it. But this one says above all, Above all, that means above everything, Justin, we, and put your name there, everybody. I put my name there. It's Nikki M. Justin has his name, Justin B. We reject fantasizing. Now, here, I'll put another line out right now in this moment. Good and bad fantasizing. So whether it's good fantasizing, oh, I'm going to win lottery. Whether it's bad fantasizing, um, I wish my neighbors would move away with their construction project. You know, whatever it is. We don't even, we just reject it all. And we accept the great reality. See, it says, the more I think. So what are you thinking about? Are you here and now? See, the big book says, may you find God now. That's page five, that's page 59. Whoa, magic book, Justin, here I go. Brain's exploding. We're on page 559 and on page 59, See, the numbers matter too. The book is just so awesome. It's like page 59 says, may you find God now. So the more I think, the more I fantasize. So I'm not allowed to think. I must be right here, present in this moment, right in this second, right now with Justin. And I I can't fantasize about anything. Nothing is missing. Oh, oh, it'd be better, better if grandbaby was here. It'd be better if, My boyfriend in Luxembourg was right here waking up with me in Toronto. No, it wouldn't. Nothing is missing in this moment right here, right now. Nothing. You see, that's that's where we, because it's like, well, what if? That's called future tripping. We don't get to do that. Page 30. Did you smash the idea that you're like anybody on the planet? You don't get to future trip. Your friends can. Does that mean that you sit and do nothing? No. Page 420. We never just sit and do nothing while waiting for God to tell us what to do. We do the next right thing and leave the, leave the results up to God. But back to page 559, which says, we, that's our I, that's Nikki and Justin, we fantasize everything. We imagine getting even for hurts and rejections. We imagine someone dying. We imagine that we're going to lose that money again. We imagine that my brother's going to die because he can't get out of addiction, whatever it may be. <clears throat> In my mind's eye, 
I play and replay above there, put obsess. I obsess, I obsess scenes, fantasies, scenarios in which I'm magically plucked from, it says a bar. How about from a situation, from a situation where I stood nursing a thought, nursing a thought, and I'm instantly exalted into some position of power. How about some position, as you said, Justin, take us into the dark. I'm dying. I'm writing a eulogy speech. Have you ever done that, people? Anybody? I know someone's mind out there is like that. I'm writing a eulogy speech, not just for my son or my daughter, for me. And I'm actually, I've told my daughter, here's my guest list. I don't want that person at my funeral. No, I've said that. Like, I don't want them there. Like, I get weird. This is my sick mind. Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm filled with this power, prestige, all these lies in my head, all these fake beliefs, all these fake concepts, all these fake ideals that, that are, don't work for me anymore. And I found, once it, at one point, Justin, too, it says, like, I found it beautiful. At one point, blotting out my consciousness with fantasy, with lies, with non-reality, with whatever it is, porn, whatever you guys do out there with, with, you know, love addiction, texting endless hours with, with, you know, I don't know. Hey, I know people who just read romance novels. They don't even realize they're in deep addiction. They're just blotting out with, con with books. And then we find it beautiful, you know, but it's not true. It's like, I live in this dream word and it's not, it's a fantasy addiction. Oh, I'm skipping ahead. Okay. So we live in this dream world, this fantasy addiction. And then here it is. A A how because the question is what how do what do I what if this what ifs are scary how do I find peace in the unknown here it is you need to get into a program and it will gently lead you from fantasizing about the what ifs to embracing the great reality with open arms which means you will get honest you will get open minded and you will get willing and you're going to find it beautiful because at last you're at peace with yourself, with others, and with God. That's what this is about. The, it's the step five promise on page 75, perfect peace and ease alone. This is not easy, you guys. Like Justin, you know, you have a big family, a wife, a community. Sometimes you got to do this alone. Like this is, we come into the world alone and we exit the world alone. We have to trust God. It's I don't know what else to say, really. I mean, you, how about you with some thoughts? Yeah, thank you so much, Nikki. And, and I love how we've gone to page 559. My my page 559, at least in this. So my sponsor had me get a brand new big book to to start from scratch here from it. So I'm not I'm not prejudiced from my my previous stuff and thinking that I know everything. And I don't have anything marked on page 559 in, in my book. And so I've just marked it up. But I've, I've heard this said many times in, in the rooms and in life. Um, you know, we talk about our little plans and designs and, and those things that, uh, that have always failed us in the past. But I've, I've heard it said, it's okay to prepare for the future, but I have to leave the results in God's hands. If I'm expecting any sort of result, whether positive or negative, I'm just setting myself up for resentment. I'm setting myself up for, <clears throat> um, well, uh, a, a deep dive into addiction because resentment will kill me. It is, it's deadly. So a, a thought that I have on this is on this, on this, uh, the what ifs, the scary what ifs, um, you know, it's, I guess it's okay to have those questions and to say, you know what, here's what I can do. I can follow what the book says. I can make, I, I can prepare for that by being aware, by be, by becoming educated on what's, what, what's there. But then I just have to be able to be at peace with myself, with others, and with God, and just leave the results up to God. And as things come along, say, you know what? This must be exactly how it should be. Everything in God's, how, how does it say there? Everything is exactly as it should be. Everything, absolutely everything. And I just think that's being able to get to that place is not easy. And I'm, I'm not there. Um, I do have times and days where I feel like, you know what? I'm okay with whatever happens. And, and had, I come into those certain trials on those spots and feel peace in those. I come into, you know, great victories and I feel peace in those. But there are other days where I'm just, I, I, I'm in great danger of excitement, fear and other things. So that's kind of my takeaway on this. Anything else that you want to comment on there, there Nikki? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, we are never there. Everybody, if you're in a 12 step program, there is no, I know people pick up chips, but in this program of life, we are never getting there because you'd have to be free from your fear, your anger, your lust, your greed, your, um, your resentments, your laziness, all you know, the seven deadly sins every day, all day. And, 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 and in your, if you, if anybody knows, there's, there's very few people like that. I mean, I know a guy named Jesus who was like that. That's what they say. Right. But who else? Like Moses was pretty good. Noah. That's why they chose him to, to build the ark. I mean, you hear there's these, these people, um, you know, the prophet Muhammad be with you. There's, there's these, you know, but rarely do you see people who are perfect. So Page 63 says we get less and less interested in our own little plans and designs. So you take a sincere position every day to be less and less interested in your plans and designs. And that means every day you're doing this work because something's going to be thrown at you. There's an entire chapter called Into Action. So I don't exactly what I said earlier, page 420. I never just sit and do nothing while waiting for God, while waiting for the spiritual principles to tell me what to do. Instead, I do the next right thing. And I leave those results up to God. And however that turns out, that's God's will for me. See, it's like this. It's like into action. Justin, you and I are parents. We better write wills. Full stop. You know, if you don't have a, if you're a parent out there, well, Nikki, I have nothing. You have something. I've seen people fight over a banana tree. I'm from the Caribbean. I've seen this. Okay. You have to have a will written. You have parents, right? Or kids. I don't care. You don't have, you have a cat, write it. Um, you know, like, um, you know, you're worried about your health. Well, what are you doing to change it? Get into action. There's a whole chapter called into action. And then I want to, as you were talking, I write notes too, Justin, and I really wrote this down. Page 68. See, everybody go deep because the what ifs, the what ifs. Well, we are in the world to play the role God assigns. And my caveat would be for that moment. See, in 1992, I was in the I was in the world to play the role of mommy. I birthed my baby then, Justin, my first child, my daughter. But ask me in 2024 what role I play in her life right now. She's 32 years old. Not much. She's in California, Napa Valley, living her best life. She's got a new guy. Like all these great things are happening for her. What role do I really play for her? You see what I mean? But I'm in the role right now in 2024. I play the role every Tuesday and more days to go serve my 95-year-old auntie. But I want to be a wife, says Nikki. Yeah, but Nikki, now's not the time, you see, because I have someone waiting for me to marry me in, Lux- in Luxembourg, but today's not the day. But I'm, I'm in the world to play the role God assigned. Today, you're assigned to, I'm, I'm assigned to be noodle with Nikki today because I do my meeting, do this. Then next, I got to speak on a podcast. I have my in-person meeting. I'm recovery lady today <laughs> with a little bit of sunbathing and relaxing. You see what I mean? Like today. In the, you know, this weekend coming every Saturday, I volunteer at the Salvation Army. That's the role I play. And then when I go to Luxembourg, I'm going back. You know, I just came back. I, I go every other month or whatever. Then I'm in the role to play, you know, practicing to be a wife. See, we're, that's what it means. So what are you in the world to play the role today? When I go to work, you know, when I go to get my grocery money on Friday night, I'm in the world to serve the people who are there at the comedy club. You know, and they like my insults and jokes and it's great. It's, I can't believe God has done this to me. You see, like I, 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 I didn't know I lost my job in COVID, all these things. And what's going to happen to me? Well, God had a bigger plan than I could have even imagined. So here, this is a real final thought for me, Justin, if I have one. Um, it goes like this. Let's repeat the question one more time. Can we do that? And then and then I want to end with this thought. Let's do that. Yeah, here's that question. I find myself being fearful of the scary what ifs that are often part of life. I want to hope that things turn out perfect according to my plan, how I want them to. How can I find peace in the unknown end result? Okay, so after all we talked about, this is how you ultimately will find peace because the consciousness of your belief, page 55, is sure to come to you. There's a promise. 
And the consciousness of my belief has come to me and is sure to continue to come to me. So this is the answer to the question after all that big book talk and very simplified. God has three answers for me. God only has three answers for Nikki M. Number one answer. Yes, Nikki. Just plain simple. Yes, Nikki. Number two answer. Not now, Nikki. Not now, Nikki. Number three answer, I have something better for you, Nikki. See, my God, I come into this program. You heard the question repeated twice on this podcast. My God never says no. My God, I get to come in here and sweep away my prejudice. Think honestly, page 55, and, and search diligently within myself and the consciousness of having the most powerful God in the universe who will solve all my problems on his her, it's timing. I don't care what, you know, no gender. I don't even, my God doesn't even have a gender because my God is love, patience, kindness, humility, being responsible, being accountable. See, these principles that, that only this energy, this frequency, this vibration called love will provide me with those three answers. And then I don't have any what ifs. I'm just going through my day going, Thank you, God. Use me, God. Boop, boop, be do. Thank you, Nikki. Grateful for that. This is good stuff. And I loved um, that paragraph that you hit on it on page 68. And I'm just going to read a couple of sentences of that as we close this out and and do the the closing reading or the close it close out. Perhaps there is a better way. We think so, for we are now on a different basis, the basis of trusting and relying upon God. We trust infinite God rather than our finite selves. We are in the world to play the role he assigns. Just to the extent that we do, as we think God would have us, we humbly rely on God. Does uh, Only when we do that and humbly rely on God, does he enable us to match calamity with serenity. And no matter what that calamity may be, whether it's a negative calamity or it's, I want the moon that would be a calamity in my life. God can match that with serenity. Keep coming back, everybody. It works when I work it. So work it. You are worth it. 